everyone, I mind, and this is set number 71479, Zoe's Cat Motorcycle from the LEGO Dreams theme. This set contains 226 pieces, two minifigures, and will retail for $19.99 in the US. This set does not officially release until August 1st, 2024, but it was gifted to me early for review by the LEGO group through the LEGO Ambassador Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are entirely my own. This set is, of course, a LEGO Dream set, and just like all LEGO Dream sets, this set has an alternate build. I will be covering all the different builds in this video, so make sure to watch the video all the way through if you want to see them all. But now, with all that being said, let's get into the review. So here's Zoe's Cat Motorcycle. It's the smallest set of this wave, and when these sets were revealed, this was one I was actually pretty excited for. From official pictures, I thought it seemed really cool, but now having it in hand, like, I do still like this set, but I don't like it as much as I expected to. So let's go through all the different details of it. The body of the motorcycle is literally like an actual cat. You have the face at the front and the legs that hold onto the wheels, and that's actually a pretty cool idea, and I think in bike form, it actually looks pretty good. The cat face at the front is a new printed part, and I think it looks amazing. It uses, like, the faceplate piece that was introduced with, uh, Lego Marvel for their, like, buildable figures, and the design feels, like, very sci-fi. I like the use of the Technic tooth pieces, too, to be ears. They actually connect with the face really well and just make for a very nice-looking shape. And then the rubber wheels of the bike are actually blue, which is a pretty cool recolor to see, because they're basically almost always black on the actual rubber tire part, so it's neat to see them mix that up and does make this set feel extra special. There's like a stickered record disc piece like on the actual wheel, and it's got music notes on it too, so it actually like moves along as it rolls. That's a really cool concept too, and you can see that's on both sides. And then there's stickers on the actual paws of the cat. The cat's legs use the pipe pieces that were introduced on the first LEGO Dreams wave last year, and I think in the bike form that looks perfectly fine, but it looks a bit weirder in the cat form, which I'll show you in a moment. And then there's these large rounded parts too that cover up the shoulders, and those can move up a little bit if you want, but they look really nice all things considered. Back legs you can see everything's very similar, same wheel piece however that like music note record piece is no longer there. The head does connect on a mini ball joint so you can move it around and have the cat look different directions so that can lead to like some more dynamic posing. And then Zoe's seat is just two studs. She stands right there. You have these pieces to represent handlebars and I don't think that looks great. She looks quite awkward up there. I wish either she was sitting down or she was like leaning forward. Instead she's kind of just stuck standing straight up unless you do something like that to lean her forward but even that doesn't look great. See so yeah, I think the entire seating section could have been done a little bit better but that should be fairly easy to customize if you wanted to. And then there's a tail at the back with a gem on it, and these giant, like, power blast pieces from the first wave of LEGO Dreams. Cool to see them again, and I believe this is the cheapest set the blue ones ever come in, but they work really well to, like, represent thrusters, like, boosting this bike forward. A detail I think is actually pretty cool is the feet are all in mini ball joints, and when you fold them out while it's rolling around, it looks a little weird. Like, it's best to keep them in here so it looks like they're actually grabbing onto the wheels. But there's a cool bit of functionality in that if you move the back legs out, they can sort of serve as a kickstand, so that way you can properly display the bike. Because otherwise, it'll have the issue that lots of other bikes have, where if you let go, it just falls over. This is a lot more natural than including an actual kickstand, so I like how they did that. Now, there is one really weird thing you can do with this set, and I'm torn between whether or not this is a good thing. Of course, the base build here is the cat, and the cat's meant to stand on its own, too. Again, we'll take a look at that in a moment. But because of that, the bike form of this still has some of that cat articulation. As I just showed with the feet, that's cool, it serves as a kickstand. But then you can also move the legs in like this, and you're left with a much weirder and wackier looking bike. When I first built this, I didn't like that at all, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't know, it's kind of a fun idea that you can mix things up, like change what form the bike is in. And of course, you can move each section of the legs individually, so like the front legs can be down, the back legs up, or the back legs can be down and the front legs up. I suppose it does give you more options for play and display, and like, this isn't necessarily bad, it's goofy, but goofy's not a bad thing for LEGO Dreams. So I don't know, maybe I do like that feature. You guys will have to let me know what you guys think in the comments. So that's about everything there is to the main build of Zoe's Cat Bike, however, that's not everything there is in the set, so let's quickly take a look at the instructions. Just like all LEGO Dream sets, there's illustrations in the instructions, which I always love looking at, so I want to show them off to you guys too. Here's the front cover showing the bike chasing a bad guy. Then when you finish the main cat build, you get this illustration, and then you're given a choice what to build. You can either build the cat bike, which is of course what we just looked at, or this cat with a jetpack, which I'm about to rebuild it into. Here's the full illustration of the cat bike, and the full illustration with the jetpack. So now let me take this apart and rebuild it into the alternate build. Before I fully rebuild this into the alternate build, here's a quick look at the base cat form. I think this looks okay, the legs seem very long without the wheels on them, and the feet also look a little bit awkward with the extra Technic pieces to like connect to the wheels, but all things considered I think it's alright. I would have liked if there was a bit more bulk in the body because it does seem a little bit thin compared to the legs. And posability here is okay, it of course uses rigid Technic joints like we looked at earlier, though now without the wheels in the middle of course each leg can move individually, so the cat can stand up very tall like this, or closer to the ground like this 
or something more in between. I'm looking at this and I think the issue I actually have with this is the front legs and back legs are way too close together. And I get why that is for the bike build, it allows room for the wheels. And when it's fully stretched out like on the bike it looks fine. But on its own the body definitely looks a little scrunched up to me, I feel like it should be a bit longer. But just like the bike I definitely don't think this is bad. It's a perfectly serviceable build and especially for $20 there's a lot to like here. And now let me finish rebuilding this into the full alternate build. Here's the alternate build I'll put together with the jetpack now on the cat's back. Of course very similar to the base form that we just looked at though now with these wheels at the top here. I like that they can still spin, that's a cool touch. And the exhaust coming out the back still work really well. And those stickered music pieces are a lot more prominently featured now. Having this here I think actually does help with the whole cat body shape too. The legs are still very close together, but like the jetpack in the middle sort of breaks them up a bit. So yeah, I think this is a cool alternate option. This is a very simple transformation, like there's very little difference between the two versions of the build. But the end result looks quite different and obviously plays very different too. It's a bike versus a mechanical cat with a jetpack. Those are two very different things. So yeah, honestly I like this a lot more than I expected. And I think throughout this review I've come to like this set a lot more. It's still not like my favorite set of the wave or anything, but I think my initial impression was a little too harsh. This is pretty good honestly, especially for $20. But I think that's about all I have to say for the builds of this set, at least for now. I'll talk about them a little bit more at the end of this video. For now, let's take a look at the one little side build in this set, and then we'll take a look at the minifigures, and then I'll give you my overall thoughts on everything at the end. So here's the only like somewhat side build in this set. It's this little raven piece, and it comes with one of the collectibles of this wave. And some variant of this comes in literally every single set. Like all eight sets from this wave come with a raven and one of the collectibles at least. And these are really cool parts. I think the raven looks amazing and I love how common it is because it is a very, very cool part. Great shaping on the actual mold and the dual molding with the trans pink looks incredible. And then the collectibles are cool to get too. They use this all new crystal dome piece and then there's a printed tile on the inside. And the printed tiles represent like different realms from Lego Dreams or like different characters' memories. I don't know the full context. The show hasn't come out yet. But you can see this one is video game based. There's a video game controller in the center. The words start at the bottom. And I think there's like six or seven of these to collect in all the different sets. I will say the video game one is one of the more common ones. It comes in two of like the smaller sets. So not the most exciting one to get here, but still very cool. I'm happy it's included. And then here are the two minifigures in the set. We have the all new season two version of Zoe, and then we have Duper. Duper is of course one of the villains of this wave, and he's the evil doppelganger of Cooper, one of the other main characters. And that's all the villains this wave. They're evil versions of the main characters. Starting with Zoe though, she is probably my least favorite minifigure of this entire wave. She's got a very different aesthetic going on where she's in like a biker outfit with the colors of the bike in this set. And obviously it does fit this set, right? This is a bike for her, and she's got like this high-tech race racing outfit, but I feel like it just doesn't really fit with the design aesthetic she had in the first wave. Most of the other characters are a similar idea, just like recontextualized for season two. Zoe though went from like a cool wilderness archer to a bike racer for some reason, and some people might prefer this look for Zoe, and if you do, like that's totally understandable, I get that. But the original Zoe figure was my favorite figure from that first wave. I thought it looked incredible, the colors were great, the design was great, and I was really looking forward to her new version, but unfortunately I just don't find this nearly as interesting. Still though, as I said, it does fit really well with this set, so I can't be that critical. I like the little cat claws on her shoes, that's a cool touch. And the entire design of the outfit reminds me of like Tron, it feels very like high-tech sci-fi. She's got an undershirt too, which you can see a little bit, and it looks to have like a cat claw print there. So I guess she's cat themed this time around, which makes sense with the cat motorcycle. And then her hair piece is still amazing as it was in the first wave. I love the texture on it, and purple's just inherently a very cool color. And then she has an all-new face print too, which looks amazing. She's got this blue makeup on her face, which is a very different look, but I love it. And the purple lipstick's a very fun touch too. And then the alternate face, she's got the same makeup, but now she's got like a confident smirk. I will say, another thing I don't like about this figure is the expressions that they gave her. Both expressions are fine in a vacuum, like there's a ton of personality there, and I think they fit her well enough. The issue is, these are the only two expressions for her. If you've seen the LEGO Dream Show at all, Zoe's not a character who's like always smiling. She smiles sometimes, so one smile's fine. But Zoe's absolutely a character who should have an angry or even neutral face as one of her options. So seeing two smiles is a little bit disappointing. Between the two, I definitely prefer this one. But yeah, both are good in terms of design, I just wish they had chosen something else. Zoe comes with a transclear neck bracket that can attach an accessory at the back, in this case her bow. And the size of this thing is ridiculous, it looks very silly on her back. Much better in her hand, but hey, this option's there if you want. Here's how it looks with her actually holding it though. And this is the bow piece that was introduced in LEGO Avatar, was it earlier this year or was that last year? I forget how long that theme's been out. Regardless, this is the bow piece that can actually shoot. It's much bigger than the old bow piece, but you push in on this arrow at the back and it actually flies out. 
You do get an extra of the arrow piece in the set in case you lose the first one or you just want an extra, but I think that's good for play. It is a little oversized because it's made for avatar figures and not normal minifigures, but in the context of LEGO Dreams, I think that's all right because everything's a little oversized and silly. And I do think the original bow piece looks a lot better, but this is more fun for play, so I think that's a fine trade-off. And then here's how she looks with the neck bracket removed, and there's a look at her back torso print too, which is actually very good. I like this a lot more than the front. She's got that cat logo, which of course matches the bike in this set, and the colors all look really nice here. If the front looked more like that, I think I'd like this figure a lot more. And then Duper is probably one of the less interesting doppelgangers. I would have liked to get the doppelganger of Zoe here just so she could actually be fighting her doppelganger in this set, but Duper's fine to get as well. His hairpiece is easily the highlight, it's the Ninjago J hairpiece in Magenta, and that's a very cool new color to get that in. And then Face Print's pretty good too. He's got like an annoyed expression on one side, and a very like wide happy smile on this side. And then he has a brick built hammer just like Cooper had in the first wave, and this all new armor piece that most of the doppelgangers wear, but it's a cool part, it's dual molded in black and trans pink, and it's not that big, like it's a subtle addition to a minifigure, but it adds just a little bit more to him. Then here's a full look at his torso print with the armor removed. It's emulating Cooper's like race car driver outfit from the first wave, and my favorite detail here is probably all the yellow, because all the doppelgangers use yellow to like some extent, but that's the part of this figure that pops the most, and I feel like that really saves what would otherwise be a somewhat boring minifigure. He's got the Neverwitch symbol at the top, and I like the whole like crest that that's on. That looks pretty nice. And around the back, he's got like this yellow spine, and that looks really good too. So he's a fine minifigure. Again, Again, not my favorite of the wave, I definitely would have preferred Doe because I think she's amazing. But it's cool to get both of these characters for cheap, I believe this is the cheapest set that Zoe has ever come in. And even though I think this figure is a massive downgrade over her original, it's still a decent looking one and one that I'm happy to get. And so, overall, what are my thoughts on this set? Coming into this review, I was expecting to say, eh, it's alright, like, you don't need it, but if you want to pick it up, you can. But I have to say, like, going through and taking a closer look at everything, I appreciate this a lot more than I did going in. The cat motorcycle is definitely funky looking, but that's kind of the point of LEGO Dreams. It's a creative model, and it's a lot of fun. And, like, yeah, some of the proportions are a little wonky, especially when it's not in bike form. But that's not the end of the world, it's still a fairly good set. And then one thing I haven't touched on too much yet is the price, and the price on this one is actually fantastic, probably one of the best of the wave. This feels like exactly what a $20 set should be. Two minifigures and a fairly substantial build, and a good part count too. This isn't like a must-have set per se, but if you like LEGO Dreams but you don't want to spend a ton of money on it, this is honestly a good set just to have a little something from the theme. You get a unique build, you get some cool minifigures, so yeah, honestly I would recommend this one, it's a good set. But of course those are just my thoughts, let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video make sure to leave a like on it, subscribe to my channel, channel if you're new, and go check out my other Summer 2024 early LEGO Dreams reviews, there should be a playlist in the pinned comment. But as for this video, I think that's about all I have to say, so thanks for watching everybody, I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!